could fly, but you've gone stratospheric tonight. <laughs> Sexy beast. Natalie, more of that. Bring it on, girl. I think that guy just said Natalie is stratospheric. And with that, <laughs> it is time for our weekly chat with Natalie Coughlin here on The Morning Swim Show. Natalie has now breezed through three weeks on the hit TV show Dancing with the Stars. And she joins us right now on Skype from Los Angeles. Natalie, how you doing? I'm doing well. I'm very excited and pleased with this past week. I feel like I'm starting to understand what Alec wants from me, and I'm starting to get into my character of the dance, because that, that's a big part of it, which I didn't realize. And um, I had a good feeling about that dance going into um, last week, so I'm very, very pleased the judges liked it, too. Well, when's the last time somebody called you a sexy beast? <laughs> I know, in an Italian accent. Um, Bruno is quite crazy and, and in a great way. Um, but, yeah, I can't remember the last time I've been called the sexy beast. So that was quite nice of him. How many times? <laughs> Although I do think uh -huh. he liked Donnie Osmond a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> How many times do you actually practice that dance throughout the week? Um, it's difficult because last week, for whatever reason, I just I got that dance. So the big thing was not to overdance it. Um, we didn't want it to get stale. So I learned that dance, you know, Wednesday of last week, and then was polishing on Thursday, polishing on Friday. Saturday we worked out a little bit, and then Sunday we just did our camera blocking, which is when you dance on stage for the first time, so they could learn the angles. Uh, we, we did that three times, and then that was it because. You don't want it. You don't want it to get stale. You want it to have spontaneity with, you know, the way you look or um, little things like that. So um, it depends. But this week is bolero, and it's quite difficult. We have a lot of tricks in there. So I have a feeling I'm going to be training really, really hard and long this week. So do you find yourself like dreaming of dancing? Yes. Oh my God. Last night. Um, okay, because the it's a longer dance this week. It's a, it's a minute twenty five versus the minute five from last week. So you know there's a lot more in it, um, a lot more content. So last night I was going through the song and the choreography over and over and over and over in my head because it, it helps me if I visualize it before I go to bed because it kind of like sets in your brain or something, you know. Um, yeah, but that's that's really all that I ever think about. But like I said, I love it. Can you equate it to like visualizing a race the night before big meet? Um, yes and no, because I do visualize my races, um, but it's so like in swimming for me for backstroke, it's like, okay, I'll visualize my dive and then my underwater work and then the swimming part and which is all the, the swimming part is essentially all the same, you know, and then the flip turn and then the finish. So there's, there's pieces of it, but in dancing, every single step is so different. Um, so there is some crossover, but it, this isn't as natural as swimming is for me. And we saw Terry McKeever in the crowd. Yeah, she was so excited. Terry and Kristen Kinane, our assistant, were there. And then Jessica Hardy and Dominic Maitri, Rebecca Sony, they were all there um, supporting me. And uh, I think they had a great time. Uh, it was such a it's such a fun show and if anyone ever has the chance to go to one of them i would highly recommend it you know if if i'm on or not um it's a, it's a really fun show and uh to see it in person i think has a lot more impact hey tom delay for people who don't really follow the show he's a former u.s congressman and he bowed out because of an injury and this has happened in the mm -hmm. past before i mean do they talk to you guys about you know, how to stay injury free or is there anything you can do? Yeah, well, what uh, Alec and I do is we stretch so much every day before we get started because, I mean, if you've seen any of my routines, my flexibility play is a big part of it. So I have to be warmed up. Um, and with and before you sign up for the show, like when you're meeting with the producers, they tell you, they're like, it's a grueling show. People get hurt. You need to know this going into it. And they try and give you you know, a little bit taste of reality. Because I, I think some people who may not have an athletic background just jump into training right away and their body just can't handle that workload. Luckily, I've been training, you know, five, six hours a day for, you know, years and years and years. So I know, I know how to listen to my body. I know how to self-treat any nagging injuries. Um, and, and, and a lot of it for me has just been um, being proactive, you know, if anything hurts, um, I'll, I'll take care of it, you know? 
You seem like the, it seems like the confidence level has risen a little bit with the great performance of last week. A little bit. My confidence has risen a little bit. Like last week, I felt really good going into the rumba just because I felt like I had all the tools to do well. I felt like I was starting to understand getting into character. I'm getting way more comfortable with Alec. Like we're, we're good. We're really good friends, actually. Um, but it's so strange to be so close to someone, you know, like nose to nose is um, not a normal position for anyone. Um, so I'm getting used to that. And then I just had a good feeling. But this week, uh, talk to me tomorrow. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's a it's a really difficult dance. But I'm but hopefully I'll nail it on Monday. All right, and remind us what the dance is to look out for this week. The dance is bolero. So it's apparently a combination of rumba and waltz. Um, it's one of the four new dances this week. We have Charleston rumba, or sorry, Charleston bolero. Uh, Lombada, which I'm so happy I did not get, and then the two-step, um, which also I'm kind of happy I didn't get. I, I'm, I'm very pleased that we got Bolero. That's what Alec wanted, so luckily um, they gave us that. But again, I'm so happy we don't have Lombada. That, that one's supposed to be quite funny. <laughs> well, knock them dead. We'll rally the votes for you. Thank you. I appreciate it so, so much. So thank you very much. All right, you're doing great, and it's fun to watch, so uh, keep it up. Thanks. Have a good day. All right. That's Natalie joining us again from L.A. We wish her luck this upcoming week on Dancing with the Stars. And that is it for the show today. We'll see you next time. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish. October issue of Swimming World magazine looks back at the memorable moments from the U.S. Open and Junior National Championships. On the cover is Missy Franklin, who was the star of juniors, swimming times that would have put her on the world championship team. Our coverage of the U.S. Open starts on page 8, where we highlight swims by Jessica Hardy and Chad LaTourette, as well as the men's 200 IM, where all eight swimmers wore briefs. Senior writer John Lone talked with Elizabeth Pelton about her quick rise from virtual unknown to world championship team member on page 12, and we continue our look back at 50 years of covering aquatic sports with a look at the years 1993 to 1996, as well as a comparison of the careers of Christina Egerzegi and Kirsty Coventry. Open water swimming enthusiasts can read Steve Munitona's story on page 18, which details how age group coaches are getting younger swimmers introduced to the sport. Our swim section features plenty of tools to help master swimmers improve technique, with tips from Carlin Pipes Nielsen and J.R. Rosania, and a week's worth of workouts from Omaha Masters coach Tom Samlin. World record holder Lois Kivy Nachman is this month's lane leader and she's profiled on page 26. Robin Jacobs talks about coaching YMCA swimmers in the swimming technique section, and Michael Stott writes about handling a tricky high school swimming season on page 30. In the junior swimmer section, you can find our coverage of junior nationals and YMCA nationals, which begins on page 51. Premium members have a lot of bonus features in this month's digital issue. Many of our stories have embedded links, such as this video interview featuring Missy Franklin's coach, Todd Schmitz. Um, she was able to go to trials at, at 13 last year. We got some valuable experience from that meet. And I think that, you know, ever since then, we've said 2012 was the goal. Coming off the meet in Vancouver, it was definitely not an easy decision on what, what meet we wanted to go to focus on. We, at the end of the day, we really wanted to make the World Cup team for, for November, when they're going to go over and race a couple short course meter meets. Um, and, and I think that we really cemented that spot for that team. And uh, I think that's going to give her a little more international experience. And, and so that when she does make that next team, whatever it may be, I think she'll be more mentally and physically prepared to be there. And on page 10, premium members can watch eight of our most memorable morning swim show interviews from this summer. Tyler Clary, Elizabeth Beisel, and Amanda Beard, just a few of the people that you can watch. If you're not a premium subscriber, you can go to SwimmingWorld.com and click on the subscribe link.